Hi everybody, welcome to today's webinar titled The Key to a Smooth Upgrade of Your IDP to Support New Users and Identity Sources. You'll be hearing from Monsanto about how they evolved their existing IDP deployment and the resulting benefits. My name is Laura, I'm with Radiant Logic, and I'll be your moderator for today's presentation. So let's get started. I'd like to remind you that everyone's lines will be muted for the duration of the webinar. However, if you have a question, you can enter it in the GoToWebinar window, and our presenters will address it at the end of the webinar. If we're not able to get to your question during the live webcast, we will email you directly to follow up. This webcast is being recorded, and a link to the recording, along with a copy of the presentation slides, will be emailed to you within the next 24 hours. So first, I'd like to introduce our speaker, our first speaker today, Anthony Randall, Security and Technology Architect at Monsanto. Anthony is a longtime identity veteran whose focus is on building identity-centric systems, improving the user experience through, di through their digital interactions, and influencing and inspiring people to join the journey. Prior to Monsanto, Anthony spent five years at Gartner Research and Burton Group. And prior to that, built out a large-scale customer identity platform for Comcast ISP in the early 2000s. So without further ado, Anthony, I'll hand it over to you. So I get the uh, screen going here, so it's bear with me. OK, can everyone see the slides? Yep, you're good. OK. <clears throat> so thanks for the intro, Laura. Yeah, so I'm going to talk about uh, federated identity services and and some of the work we've done at Monsanto over the last couple of years. And just to kick things off, I'm just going to do a quick intro or background on Monsanto, uh, who we are. And uh, we're a, a large sustainable agricultural company, uh, Fortune 500. And we're headquartered in the Midwest, in St. Louis, Missouri. And we operate about 400 or so facilities in, in 60 or so countries around the world. And part of our mission is working together for sustainable agriculture to bring a broad set of solutions to help nourish a growing world through seeds and fertilizer, uh, fruits, vegetables, key crops such as corn, soybeans, and cotton that help uh, farmers to have better harvests whilst using minimal resources. And one of the things that we're doing right now, which is sort of plays right into this topic is, is combining a lot of the science and technology to deliver solutions to farming problems to increase yield around <clears throat> with digital solutions such as digital prescriptions. So in other words, helping or using data to increase our yields in the field. So that ties into IoT, uh, sensors on devices, uh, on tractors uh, to help improve the current yield from the seeds today. So with that background, um, so what is identity management, federated identity management, and what does it mean to, to us as practitioners and, and to us at Monsanto? And I think about uh, this in the context of me and my wallet, um, a digital picture, if you will, a, a consolidation of all the things that, that the capabilities and the relationships to things that I have today. So think about your wallet and all the things within that, they enable you to have interactions both digitally or face-to-face, -face, person to person, with a lot of range of services that allow you to travel, to purchase things, to be a member of something. So I think of that concept when I think about identity transferred into the di digital landscape. And, and the challenge is really to help consolidate information around identity that typically exists in, in certainly not just our company, but many companies I've seen through the past in disparate sources. So many things like directories, many things like databases that hold information about identity and context relating to what an identity can do. So why am I talking about federated identity management now? I think as you've probably heard, there's you know, digital, digital transformation is on our doorstep. That's the new buzzword of the, the here and now. But certainly federation is something that's been a hot topic for now for many years. And, and we as consumers, not just as you know, employees of companies, have an increasing number of digital interactions. So 
helping to consolidate information around an identity, our identity, and improving that digital experience is key for digital transformation of businesses going forward. Um, and as I said, identity is everywhere. And, you know, I've seen that certainly over the many years that uh, I've been working in this space. And, and I'm sure you all have stories uh, and current state environments where you see identity is distributed across many different systems, replicated for different systems to use, application-specific data stores or directory uh, driving a single use case, whether that be for something like Remedy or for CRM or for email, the list goes on. So we may say, so what to that? Um, and certainly, you know, customer experience is driving the change right now around identity. We've seen, you know, many companies address this and address digital identity well. If we think about companies like Apple or Amazon or even Uber, in fact, it's all about what I can do on a, on a cell phone, what's the best interaction that I can have with a company that compels me to use their service because the experience is so good. Um, otherwise, if I have a relationship with a the company, then I may be burdened, burdened with multiple identities to manage or, or too many passwords to remember. Um, as an administrator, as an operator, more systems to manage those identity identities within. And we've seen that user context is just scattered or, or unattributable to the personal identity that's interacting with us. So we don't have a good picture of, of who's interacting with us. And certainly now, as it's becoming more important, uh, compliance requires a lot more effort to manage that infrastructure environment from a security and a privacy standpoint. And from an audit standpoint, it's becoming a lot more complex. So what we did at Monsanto and what we're on the, the journey towards is improving federated identities. So by trying to take all the different sources of user information that exist there across different data stores and consolidate that information using virtual directory to create a single federated identity, a rich context, so that we can use that information as a service to consuming applications to web, mobile, or API to provide a more rich and full interaction and relationship with the customer. So a couple, a couple of things we focused on specifically at Monsanto was, uh, first of all, employee uh, interactions. And the first problem we solved there was um, accessing information both from inside or off the network. So we had two directories that were replaced, one internally and one within the DMZ, which both required a different account for the user to manage. And in often cases, different passwords to manage. So if I'm off the network and I need to access an application, I'll be putting one ID in and password. If I'm on the network, then I'll be using another ID and password. And typically, that's through my laptop, so using into Windows integrated authentication to seamlessly sign on. But from a management standpoint, it's, uh, it's more complex to operate two platforms and systems, and some of the user experience is not what it should be. So this was a relatively simple one. We were able to consolidate two sets of identities from two different directories and consolidate those into a single record, if you will, uh, within the VDS, such that wherever I'm accessing the application, whether it be on or off the network, the same identity is being used with a more full and richer context to access the applications and policies are centralized around a single identity as opposed to being managed in two separate places. So that's what the VDS helped us to do in that particular use case. And then moving on to our second use case <coughs> really is around our customers. And Monsanto's had a, you know, a good track record of dealing with uh, a number of customers, and that's certainly growing. We think about our customer base, it's, it's farmers and dealers, dealers being the prevalent uh, customer 
currently, but that's changing when we look at some of the different global patterns. And the uh, the customer model is sort of similar to a to a brewery where the distributor acts as the primary customer customer, certainly in the U.S. But that's changing a lot when we think about growing markets in, in India and China, <coughs> excuse me, in countries like that. So what what we have is a situation built up over many years of multiple OUs. So think about Active Directory and and different OUs that were created that for application specific um, containers, if you will. So each OU had its own application, and each identity within that OU was separate. So, so think about um, you know a customer or an identity that needs to access five different applications. Well, in our case, they have five different identities. Uh, that's the way that uh, we've grown that ecosystem over a period of time, but it becomes very inefficient to operate, and more importantly, is a bad experience for the customer. Again, similar problem, multiple identities, multiple passwords. So that's not what we want to strive towards with our you know, customer 360 model. So we're looking at improving that. So we, so we did, again, with um, the virtual directory, we were able to consolidate all the different uh, OUs and identities that belong to the same person and create a single aggregated view of the customer and their context and entitlements to be able to provide that seamless customer interaction. So accounts were linked and con context is combined. So the experience from the portal is a lot more seamless. And then some other interesting things that we've done now with the BDS is start to use APIs to be able to create and monetize new products and services, and also meet the demands of a lot of, uh, a lot of use cases in the field from researchers or salespeople uh, interacting with dealers and farmers and customers to be able to create mobile or web applications and allow those applications to be authenticated and authorized through APIs and, and also create a set of product entitlements, which is uh, something new for us, but it's allowed us to move beyond the sort of two phase of, of authorization, if you will, where you have typically groups that have that coarse-grained access and then the fine-grained authorizations in the applications themselves, we've extracted the entitlements and created uh, a single entitlement, if you will, which is essentially a list of context that relates to who a customer is and what they can do and the specific product entitlement they have to interact with whichever application they're interacting with. So, so we take away the need to have separate application repositories for entitlements and store those within the EDS itself. And we use modern standards such as OAuth, OpenID Connect, and restful ways of protecting those APIs and services so we can expose and provide a faster path to creating new products and exposing those in safe ways through an improved or a better customer experience. And if you think about that in context of growth, uh, as I said, I think you know many companies are looking at this now are offering more consumer web and mobile based services and the number of people who are using phones or internet is is growing significantly. Uh, certainly large numbers out there right now <clears throat> and continues to grow. And uh, there's certainly an increase of mobile commerce and has been and uh, there's a uh, an exponential growth pattern happening right now. Uh, and then when you think about IoT from the uh, farming standpoint and we see lots more devices in our ecosystem that are going to help to improve the our product and our interaction with customers and 
And these are all things that when you think about context of uh, digital services, then identity is growing and growing out there. And that's not just identity of people, but identity of devices and sensors and gateways and many different tools and services that provide a, an ecosystem that allows us to have a more rich and deep interaction with our customers. So these are all things where the gradient logic, the uh, virtual directory, help us to provide that logic context to deal with scale and growth. So we're about halfway there right now. Uh, we're improving our, our context around the customer. Uh, we're combining relationship data and a better view of our customer. And this particular slide shows some of the things you think about from an identity standpoint, some of the interactions that play part of the story of a relationship from an identity to our customers and the services that we provide those. And that's to provide you know, business oriented systems with security and distribution so we can scale to the millions of customers and farmers that are out there today. So the, I guess the eventual view or goal is that we have a highly scalable identity context service that we're able to use for multiple purposes to create this large, rich, context information driven service that many different applications and services can use from web to API to service desks to do decision support, marketing, business analysis. And that, that information is stored in a single place, one where it can be scaled out massively as opposed to many different environments or directories or databases. So doing away with the things of the past. And that's about all I have. All right, thanks, Anthony. So uh, next up, I'd like to introduce Wade Ellery from Radiant Logic. Wade is our senior solutions architect with more than 19 years increasing responsibility and experience in enterprise IT, direct and channel software, and services sales and management. He holds in-depth knowledge, in knowledge and experience in enterprise IAM, IAG, risk and compliance, and IT security products. So Wade, take it away. Uh, thank you, Laura, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, Anthony, you uh, did an excellent presentation on uh, setting up some of the uh, challenges that uh, Monsanto's been facing and how Radiant Logic's been able to help you address those. What I'd like to do now is, is dive a little bit deeper into some of the mechanics and some of the processes in Radiant Logic solutions that actually show you how we deal with the uh, complexity and the challenges in bringing together multiple identity stores and giving that customer or that employee a much more seamless and a much more unified experience that helps build both retention and uh, a better customer experience going forward. This is all built around the idea of federating identities through virtualization, which is the core function of Radiant Logic's products. But where this comes from is a, a challenge that's been growing over the past couple of decades. We used to live in that little box in the middle of this screen where all of our identities were inside the firewall. They were all employees. All our applications were run off of our local servers. Everything was fairly controlled and defined. And the challenges that we're facing now are an explosion on all three of these axes. And actually, Anthony pointed out each of these. He's got applications now that are being served not only internally, but potentially externally, or people externally that need to get access to applications inside the organization. So there's a real challenge on managing application access, even to applications you may not own. And as constituencies are expanding from employees now to an even more important group, the customers themselves, IT is being asked now to be an enabler for customer interactions, to be able to grease the rails there and make the customer experience more enjoyable, make it stickier for the customer so they're more likely to stay and continue to do more business with your organization. And that's falling back more and more on the IT organization, which is a much larger scale of effort for them to take on and potentially an even more diversified environment to integrate 
than they had to experience with the employees and contractors. And then, as you mentioned, also we're looking at more devices now in terms of what we connect to and what we're having to be able to support. Our customers are looking for more and more of a mobile experience. They want to be able to move from their desktop to their laptop to their iPad to their phone and do that seamlessly and have a very similar uh, integrated experience. And any of you that have typed in passwords on your phone realize that if you had 10 passwords for one company for 10 different applications, and you're trying to do that through a mobile experience, that would be a fairly frustrating effort. So the idea here is that we're really dealing with an exploded market and exploded IT infrastructure. And the only thing left for us to really control or manage to bring order to all this is identity itself. As Forrester has coined it, identity is the new perimeter, and that's what we're going to focus on with Ready and Logic is how to get your arms around those identities and deliver all that information in a rich, full context of identity to your applications and to your users. So traditionally, we've had uh, federated access solutions, the solutions that get us connected to our applications, liking to, to talk to one directory, one source of information, ideally. But the challenge is that in reality, both for our employees across multiple AD domains and other directories and databases, but especially with our customers, their identities may be scattered over multiple stores within the organization. So this really frustrates that uh, concept of a simple direct line between the customer and where his identity information and attributes are stored. To manage the concept of multiple applications and simplifying the sign-on for the user, We've built tools that do federated access, the top half of this, this fan here, where you can see now the capability of logging in once and potentially giving the user access to multiple different applications. But that challenge on the back end still persists. I can't really deliver that experience for the user if I can't bring together all those places where his identities are stored. I can't aggregate all the different passwords that he has in his environment. I can't bring together those rich attributes to be able to authenticate and authorize that user and give him the experience that he needs. So you really need to be able to duplicate that federated access with the idea of federating identity. And federating identity solves the challenge of being able to present your solution, your aggregated federated access platform which may be a SAML-based application, maybe web access management, maybe a combination, maybe API management, using a myriad of protocols to serve that information to the user, being able to provide that platform a single source of identity that spans all your internal identity stores. And the challenge here is if you look across the bottom there, those are all different flavors of identity, Active Directory and databases, enterprise applications, partner directories, it's really a heterogeneous environment, and bringing that all together in one common profile is not something that's simply done. And this is where the benefit of Radiant Logic comes into play. We are actually able to aggregate all those back-end sources, do all the transformation, translation, all the schema mapping, all the protocol changes, and be able to give you a unified view of that user but not just one unified view in the idea of the old meta directory where you had to have to shove everything into one structure and everybody had to agree on one model. We also give you the ability now to represent this data in many different forms, many different contexts, and really leverage that on an application by application or constituency basis. So the number one key here, and the first thing you want to address is that if I have identities in multiple locations, chances are I've got users with different IDs that belong to the same person. I may have a similar ID that belongs to a different person. I have to have a really powerful logic engine that can take the identities from multiple different sources that may be directories and databases and may have different naming conventions and be able to bring that into a single user profile where I've aggregated all those back-end sources together. And I can point to Laura Callahan in one place but know how to map back to Laura Callahan's information and all the other resources that I have. And you have options here in terms of how you manage this information. I may have a system of record here that needs to persist in my environment. This is a database where all my customer transaction information is run through. So I don't want to replace that. And I don't want to move those, data, those identities out. But I need to be able to access them and leverage them as part of my profile. 
So I can connect to that system and make that information visible in Radiant Logic without disrupting any of the back-end functionality of that platform. It's still available for its legacy requirements, but I can now leverage that information, combine it with other data in the system. You may have a scenario where you actually now want to store that information directly in Radiant Logic as a LDAP 3.3 compliant directory. We can be that store for that uh, user information and still combine that with other information from systems that are uh, stored externally. And we can even bring that information in and cache that data with near real-time refresh so that the backend system persists but we're serving the information locally at the speed of a directory and overcoming a lot of the drawbacks of customers having to wait while complex joins are done on databases and affecting their ability to authenticate and authorize quickly. So looking at the Monsanto use case, they saw this very similar challenge in their environment, needing to unify multiple sources of identity, AD and E directory being the primary ones. And again, two different directory structures, two different schemas, two different sets of protocols. So we needed to be able to build that common uh, integrated profile and accept from the back end those two different systems but present them in a common format, which we can do within Radiant Logic. We also need to be able to expand the capability of integrating additional back end systems. A lot of applications now are coming along with requirements for addition, additional attributes maybe one stored in HR and other databases to make decisions on authorization or authentication. You want to bring that into that same rich profile, so you need to have that capability of extending out the schema in Radiant Logic and building that aggregated view. And also what's important too is the ability to segment that data because you don't want to build just a giant pool of all your user information and expose that to everybody that queries for any authentication, authorization, or reporting requirement. You want to be able to segment that data into sets uh, by constituency, by certain attributes that you only want to expose for certain applications. You want to be able to filter that information so that what you share with each endpoint is completely under your control, and you only give the endpoint the minimum that it needs to be able to do its job. This is very important when you're talking about customer information, because you have customer confidentiality agreements. You have data management requirements, you need to be able to really document and show that you are protecting that customer information. It's not just freely available to any application that makes a get all query to the user ID. And then you want to make this information also visible to the user and visible to internal processes. You want the marketing department to be able to see now what's my full user profile look like? What's my breadth of information I have about this particular customer? If I'm looking at the sales organization, the ability for them to see where my customer is interacting with me and where he hasn't interacted with me, or where he has accounts and platforms and where they're missing, gives me opportunities to cross-sell and upsell in my organization or better provide an end user experience for that user. So the project at Monsanto called for a single point of access. And again, this comes back to a key function of the whole user experience is one place to go to get access to all the resources you need, eliminating that requirement for you to go into many different platforms and authenticate over and over again. And this is common across all of our customers. They're all striving to simplify the user experience down to one point to go, get access to everything that you do to interact with us, and a single view of the user so that the organization can also see where are all the places in my organization that user is. Uh, currently exists, and, and what's his profile, what's the nature of his interaction with me in each of these different platforms in a global view or a single pane of glass, as we say. And also improving the customer experience, you want to make it as smooth and as simple as possible. If you remember some of the, the earlier uh, reports around Facebook, they spent months and months trying to perfect the, the enrollment process in Facebook to be as simple as possible, because they understood the longer it takes and the more difficult it is for a user to do something, the more likely they're going to stop. They're going to abandon the shopping cart. They're going to not enroll in the process. They're not going to complete their, their forms. You want to make this as simple and easy as possible. And this is key, again, to having that information available. So you don't ask the customer three, four, and five times for the same data for different platforms. You make that information aggregated and correlated so the platforms can get that information when it's only a bit of an And then authenticating that user is also critical 
whatever credentials she comes in with, if you have those credentials in your system on some platform, Radiologic can route you back to that particular platform, validate the user with those credentials, so you don't force the users to go through a new password and identity setup and re-registration when you consolidate all of your environments. You can let them have what considers on their end a seamless experience to get to that point. And you want to be able to enrich those profiles for the customers because the key here is, again, leveraging what you know about that customer across all these platforms in every scenario where that information is going to be important. It's going to be used for authorization. It's going to be used for building the context of what the user sees when they're in the application. Being able to see all that information and then leverage that is critical to the experience the end user has and being able to enrich that model. We used to say that the, uh, the world was looking for everything at Google speed. I wanted to be able to get my information at the speed that Google loads a search page. If Google can do it, why can't my, my company that I'm working with load the page that fast? Now just loading pages quickly isn't enough. The customer wants to experience that Amazon experience of everything comes up at once. I have my full history there. I have all the, uh, the things that I purchased. I have the things that I'm interested in. I have things that I may not have not thought about but based on profile analysis are suggested to me. So it's critical now that we have that rich user profile to deliver that experience. And at Monsanto, we had to be able to make this information available to many endpoints. Ping Federate for federating access to SaaS applications was a critical consumer. RSA Access Manager for managing web access management and API management within the organization and other applications was another endpoint completely different set of requirements and protocols potentially than what Ping was looking for, but you don't want to stand up a second infrastructure simply to provide a second endpoint. Radiant Logic gives you the ability to have a single infrastructure, a single source that they can point to, and you can filter and translate that data as each endpoint needs it. Even down to Microsoft's Forefront Identity Manager, their provisioning platform now has a single point to talk to to get information about the users to potentially propagate that information to back-end sources. So you can leverage this over and over in your organization. And one of the really nice things about the infrastructure, because we are standards-based and platform agnostic, you may choose later to snap out one of your access management solutions and snap in a new one. Instead of going through a laborious integration to all your back-ends and rebuilding all your processes and rebuilding all your policies, you simply have one place to talk to, a rich user profile to configure against, and a very easy process for adding another access management layer, changing your platform, adapting to the world as it changes under you. Because that's one of the things in IT we all recognize is uh, change is constant. And the more flexible and dynamic your platform is, the more easily you can adapt to those changes. So in the Monsanto environment, again, as we mentioned, you've got Active Directory and eDirectory. There were two environments, an internal infrastructure and an external DMZ. Those were created because you don't want necessarily the internal accounts exposed outside the firewall, but you have the same user constituencies. So you need to be able to provide a filtered view of those users externally and internally. With Radiant Logic, we're able to bring those together and handle the fact that duplicate account accounts have been created in both systems to originally uh, address that to uh, infrastructure model, so we can easily make those now appear as a single account when it's necessary or appropriate. And potentially then uh, supporting the process of migrating customer populations from one directory to another or from databases into a directory. You have that ability within Radiant now to present the information independent of the back end. So as you're moving information on the back end, as you're transforming and translating that information from one system to another, the applications, the access management layer doesn't know that the back ends are shifting because Radiant is hiding all that movement and, and change from them and presenting a, a consolidated and consistent view of the information regardless of how it exists on the back end. And then across the scale of 100,000 customers, 30,000 employees, Radiologic is a solution for larger organizations. We do play primarily in the Fortune 500 market where there's a requirement for us to deal with a complex environment with a large number of users to be able to scale effectively. We'll talk a little bit later about how scaling is important and Radiant Logic can necessarily deliver some distinctions in that area. Well, one of the key capabilities that we've touched on earlier and, and mentioned is the ability to bring together different sources of identity. And this has been a, a challenge in our industry because 
uh, different platforms have grown up speaking really different languages with different customs and different traditions, as you might say. And those are different schemas and protocols and naming conventions and actual uh, structures. So how do you bring all that together? Well, Radiant Logic is a very powerful logic engine that lets you connect to the different backend platforms, whether it be a database, uh, an external application or a cloud application even, a directory, Active Directory, LDAP Directory, whatever you may be connecting to, and bring that information in. And because we can recognize the sources of that data in the existing structure, we can then map together a global profile that may combine information like group information from multiple sources. It may aggregate information from multiple platforms and display a, a source of record. So if AD is always the source for my employee ID, Regardless of what my user ID might be called, I'm going to always display employee ID and use the AD information for that. So I have options on how this information is brought together, how it's aggregated, how it's displayed, and I have the ability to transform and normalize this data now so I have this rich profile available. I can even build dynamic groups off of attributes from multiple sources. So I can use my sales department from a database, my user uh, project ID from an application, I can use my title from AD as a filter to determine what dynamic groups I'm a member of. And then most importantly, we can provide those dynamic groups to the application as a static group. So the application doesn't even have to understand how to manage a dynamic group, and many applications don't. We can provide that as a static list of users in that group or as a member of attribute in the user's attributes themselves. So it makes it much easier for applications to use that authorization method, but build it based on attributes you have for multiple platforms. This really opens up a lot of capabilities around authorizing access, and especially for customers when you're talking about authorizing their access to different applications or different parts of my product in information or different uh, sales and, and order processing mechanisms based on what I know about that profile and be able to granularly assign that information, I get a lot more dynamic use of the uh, platform. And I can then expand that to give my customer a much richer experience than just letting them in the front door and then limiting what they can do because I'm not able to secure their experience. So with Radiant Logic, what we've done to provide this for you is, is combined the, the best of a meta directory and the best of a virtual directory. And if you look at our icon, our logo, you'll see it's a blue sphere on top of a golden pyramid. The blue sphere is that logic engine that I talked about. It's the brain of Radiant Logic that allows us to do things like aggregate different uh, uh, protocols together, take databases and directories and web services and bring that information into a common platform. Let's us transform and translate attributes. It lets us calculate new values. It lets us then publish that information, whether it be in a REST interface or an LDAP, as a web services call, even as a, a JDBC accessible SQL table. So this information can be transformed and translated in this logical layer here. But on top of that, and what really makes this a powerful combination is our storage. And our storage is built on what we call HDAP. It's a Apache big data technology around Lucene and Zookeeper that addresses some of the major challenges around scaling LDAP infrastructures. And it gives you the ability to do two things. You can take information, as I mentioned before, that is sourced from a, uh, a back-end platform that has legacy requirements that you don't want to sunset, and it's the source of, of truth for that data, but it may be slow, it may be down on the weekends for four hours for backups, it may not, uh, the table joins may take time to, to generate. So it may not be a platform you're really comfortable with giving a user experience tied to that. Um, if we all remember healthcare.gov's kickoff and how slow that system was and how much of a, a customer interface uh, challenge that was for people. A lot of that had to do with being tied to back-end systems that were slow to respond and slow to provide information for authentication authorization. So here we can actually take the copy of that data, persist it in our local store on disk, so we avoid the issues of memory cache where things aren't refreshed fast enough or you lose um, access to the data during refresh or you don't have the right data at the right time. We can persist all that information locally on disk and then 
watch the back end, monitor for changes so that any change on the uh, source of truth is automatically immediately reflected in our stored copy, and then use that stored information to deliver that data at the speed of a directory. So a user's authentication, a user's authorization is quick, they don't have a spinning wheel, they don't lose interest, they're able to sweep right through the interactions with your organization and your applications and have a very positive experience. But in addition to persisting that information that's stored on a, a source of truth outside of Radiant Logic, it is an LDAP v3 compliant directory, and we have the capability of actually being an identity store. We're fully able to function as an LDAP directory, so you can now have information stored in Radiant Logic as a directory wrapped in the logical virtual bubble that allows you to now use that as another source, just like you would your Active Directory or a backend database and bring that information together, manipulate it, uh, and manage it as you would before, but having a store for that information that leverages the big data, Lucene, full text indexing, the block level replication of ZooKeeper, and we'll talk a little bit later about how powerful that is in terms of delivering uh, the value and, and the scalability that uh, you need when you start talking about large customer environments of millions or tens of millions of, of endpoint uh, identities. So this is a, an example of a, a production architecture, and, and here we have, as I mentioned before, the uh, the Hadoop or the uh, Apache Big Data based HDAP platform for Radiant Logic. And the key here, if you notice, we've got sets of three servers in each data center. This is actually a three-server cluster built around the big data model that allows us to do automatic failover and recovery from platforms. We have a leader and followers much like a RAID array for drives, for hard drives, where you can pull out one hard drive and the, the data is still fully available and the system continues on, you put a replacement drive back in the system and it automatically rebuilds that replacement drive and brings it back, on, back online. You have that same capability now on an, an LDAP server level in a Radiant Logic HDAP cluster. So you have some tremendous ability here to do uh, high availability and disaster recovery or event uh, disaster recovery right within the platform itself. And also, because we're doing block level replication between these nodes, we're eliminating the traditional contention between replicating data between different nodes of a uh, LDAP directory structure and the end user's access request. So if you have an update to a uh, particular image here in the model, we're going to replicate that update to the followers here in, on the block level in nanoseconds. Traditionally, when you bring up extra LDAP servers to provide more throughput in your system, you have to set up a separate replication between those servers that actually competes with the user for resources to uh, do that replication where the user's experience now will be affected by that and will slow down response to the system. Because we're doing this at the block level, it's completely separate from the LDAP replication model, we're able to eliminate that contention now. So you get seamless throughput to all the nodes and synchronization simultaneously without a performance hit. And again, this is critical. When you start to scale to, to millions of users or tens of millions of users, you need to have a very broad uh, set of servers available to provide a lot of concurrent throughput but synchronizing those can be overwhelming to a traditional LDAP model where that's addressed in HDAP here. This is a three node cluster. We can go out uh, five, seven, nine, uh, as many nodes as you need to service the, the type of constituency you're looking at here. And then in a multiple data center model, we're doing LDAP replication between these platforms here um, so that you still have the traditional model of being able to move that data. But all that replication is managed internally inside HDAP, so you don't have separate replication servers and replication journals running on additional platforms. You don't need to stand up more servers. And we can selectively replicate information and do a multi-master model here, so you have a lot of flexibility in how this information is stored and shared. It may be a US and a European infrastructure, and you don't want all the European data making a, a trip over to the US because of compliance requirements. And you can set those filters just where you need them to make sure that the right data is in the right place at the right time. And then all the back-end sources that you have in your environment tie into this platform to provide access to that data. So we can, again, virtualize the information from the back-end. We can store it internally and then make it available to the applications 
in a very seamless model in a seamless manner. And there's the block level replication and the ability to do the cache refresh of a back end platform and do the same on another system with a direct connection to back ends and block level replication across those leaders and caching that data and then making it available to the applications on the front end. Now another scenario here, and we're seeing more and more customers looking at doing this now, is actually taking a cluster up into the uh, cloud using uh, Amazon services to do that or other uh, hosted platforms in the cloud and the ability now to have either a DR uh, instance sitting up on an Amazon platform or have an, an active system running on Amazon where you have the ability now to host the information in the cloud and, and move off of your on-premise uh, location or have an on-premise implementation connected to your local sources but then replicating that information up to the cloud so that you have access to this information both off your internal platform and in your cloud-based uh, platform. So there's quite a bit of variety here in capabilities in terms of how you distribute this information and it's been optimized by Radiant to make sure the data that you have is available to the end user when it's needed in a way that they're going to be able to have a very positive experience and be able to get access to the information they need, be able to authenticate and authorize quickly and effectively, and you have that global view of the user that you're looking for. So just to give you sort of a summary on what we were talking about here and where the, the challenges uh, occur when you're trying to take on kind of the project that Monsanto did with Radiant and how we deal with that. Um, identity integration is, is really the key piece that has to be in place in order to provide the user and the internal, uh, the, the customer and the internal user with that seamless experience, that frictionless interaction with your systems to either make their jobs easier and more efficient and giving them access to do what they need to do within the organization, but for your customers, even more importantly, giving them that smooth and simple and, and friendly experience that they have, making them think that you actually are taking them into consideration. You're not asking them to do uh, multiple authentications or enter information multiple times, that you're presenting them with data that's helpful and useful for them, and it builds that relationship where they're much happier and much more likely to come back and do more business with you when it's simple and frictionless for them to interact. Now, this has to happen against multiple sources, as we talked about the ability to aggregate and correlate and disambiguate, be able to separate identities based on similar identities and different people, same person, different identities, all the logic of that blue bubble that makes all this possible. And what this actually gives you the capability now of doing is really expanding your existing single sign-on platform and federated access to SaaS applications. It allows you now to bring in new populations of users very easily because you can add them to your existing infrastructure and they'll automatically be in the global profile and have access to the resources that you've integrated with Radiant Logic. We have a lot of customers in mergers and acquisition scenarios where bringing in a new organization was traditionally a multi-year headache of duplicate accounts and slow migration and, and legacy uh, dependencies and a lot of issues. Where here we can virtualize that new constituency and make it appear like the parent company's uh, users and accounts to the application so almost immediately with their existing credentials they can get access to the internal resources and start to participate in the new organization. And because we insulate you from that back end, now you can make all the changes, the migration, the reorganization of that information without affecting the user experience, without disrupting your access management or your auditing. So this is very important in that particular scenario. And as I mentioned earlier also, the ability to snap in and snap out new access requests, whether you've got a new reporting system you're bringing in for compliance and it needs to see all the users across all your systems, why build that infrastructure a second time? Why not leverage what you've already done for authentication and authorization for reporting? And when you're talking about customers, imagine the capability of your marketing and sales tools to be able to look one place and get a very broad and rich profile for the customer and the ability to transform and translate that data into the exact format and the labels and the context that the application reporting or, or customer application needs 
in order to be able to operate and to be able to give back valuable information. And this really maximizes your ROI because you can use this service for initiatives that you're coming down the road you're not even aware of now. We have customers that have been on our platforms for 8, 10, 12 years. When they originally purchased Radiant Logic, they had no idea was that cloud was coming. I mean, who saw the cloud seven years ago? I used to have to say five years ago, but somebody might have thought of it then. But really, back in that space, no one thought about applications hosted on the internet that would be available to their customers and their constituencies. But because they have Radiant Logic and the flexibility that's built in, they're able to use our global profile that they're using for local web access management now to feed their federated access to SaaS applications seamlessly. And so all that investment they made is reused and, and pays for itself again and again in the organization. So that concludes our summary of some of the back end uh, processes necessary to deliver on the model that Monsanto did. And, and Monsanto is an excellent example of a customer that's leveraged um, a lot of the capabilities of Radiant Logic. There are a very broad set of functions, and I haven't even necessarily scratched the surface on all the ways the product can deliver value. But what I'd like to do now is just open up to uh, any questions that people may have, uh, either about what we presented or outside of the scope of what we talked about, and hopefully address some of those before we wrap up at the top of the hour. All right, thanks, Wade. So uh, I do have a few minutes here. Probably won't be able to get to all the questions. But again, if we don't, uh, someone will email you to follow up. So um, let's start with, I see some for Anthony. So we'll start with one of those. Um, why did you decide to focus on federated identity and co consolidation at Monsanto? Yeah, thanks. Um, <clears throat> I think there's a few reasons, really. Um, you know, I talked about the uh, the number of systems that manage identity, and you know one of those um, is is around driving efficiency, just of operating different systems that store identity out there and consolidating those into one. So, so the goal with Radiant for, for us is you know start to be able to once we consolidate, remove some of those different directories and databases so we can drive efficiency and uh, the way we operate there. And then, you know, additional to that is is improving security hygiene. Um, as we've got so many different uh, identities in different places with different policies, different entitlements, it becomes very difficult to manage. And I did mention before about passwords. You know, I think we all know now that they're becoming, you know, less secure, or or they're being highlighted at least in the press as uh, being a weak point. So the less passwords that people will have to manage the, the, the narrow the attack surface. And then, you know, finally, I think I mentioned this uh, again, is, you know, there's a, there's a high expectation around the user experience, and, and consumerization has really pushed that, and it's just raised the bar. Um, with, you know, with, about what Apple's done, uh, and I mentioned before, Uber, there's a real high demand for instant, responsive, reactive applications and services. And the current ecosystem doesn't provide that. So many reasons, not just a few. OK, great. Thank you. Um, and Wade, you mentioned that Radiant Logic HDAP store had many advantages over traditional LDAP directories. What are some of those advantages? Uh, excellent question. And, and let me sort of reiterate those again a little bit if I can. Um, the, the traditional LDAP directory uh, has a uh, requirement for you to set up potentially multiple nodes in order to provide uh, concurrent access for lots of users. So when you start talking about large constituencies like customers or large organizations where you have a lot of traffic coming into your LDAP directory for authentication and authorization, uh, for applications, for front end access, for SAP applications potentially. Uh, when you have that large traffic, you want to set up multiple servers to provide that traffic, uh, multiple points to connect and spread the load across those platforms. But the challenge is that that authentication authorization is based on the information that's stored in that directory. And if you have updates coming into that platform, if it's receiving um, updates to passwords, authorization, dynamic groups, anything that may be changing in that platform has to be now replicated across all those systems. And you end up creating this traffic pattern now where you're sending files back and forth between the servers to keep them in sync, 
But that's using the same method, the same process, and the same resources that you're using for users to access that. So as you add a new node to provide more throughput, you're adding more overhead to the synchronization process. And you get this diminishing returns model where you have a really hard time managing that. So what you end up doing is segmenting your data and saying everyone that's A through L is on this server and everyone M through Z is on this server. But now I have to have some logic above that to be able to route the user to the right server so that I don't have that, uh, I have a single uh, consolidated view of that user. So with Radiant Logic, you can eliminate that need to segment your users into different platforms because we do the replication at the block level. Much like cloning a hard drive, you can do that in minutes where copying a hard drive files from one to another could take hours. So we eliminate that contention. But we also add into that Lucene, which is a bottom-up index, much like the indexing used on, on Google for the Internet. And that allows you to do free text searching and searching across multiple returns uh, across that data infrastructure, something a traditional LDAP directory can't do. So we start doing dynamic groups of saying everyone that's in sales in Chicago that's on the target project is in the special target sales group. That calculation requires a multi-valued search. And with Lucene, that can be done very, very quickly. Traditional LDAP directories can't return that result with any kind of performance. So you really overcome two of the big challenges there, um, handling replication, handling indexing, and being able to give the kind of performance that you're looking for in a store for your user information. OK, great. Thanks, Wade. So looks like we're out of time for today. Uh, thank you for your time, Anthony, and thank you, Wade. Have a great day, everyone. Glad you could be with us. Thank you, everyone.